Hi guys, thank you so much for joining today. We're gonna to be doing a, um, a fairly basic level math class, um, but you will maybe want to add some arm weights, um, some hand weights, just you know anything from soup cans that you might have at home, or if you have one or two pounds. Uh, I do have three, and three might be a little bit heavy, especially if you're new to using hand weights, but uh, you can you can choose. We're going to start uh, down on our back on the mat. And if you have any, um, if you have any low bone density, it's nice to be able to get down on your side and then do a log roll over onto your back, just so that that spine doesn't get too much into flexion. And then, as we often do, uh, knees bent, feet grounded to the mat, arms at your sides, palms down if possible, nice wide shoulder blades. And I just want you to press everything into the mat. Like really, anything that's touching the mat, you wanna press it into the mat more. So spread your fingers, press the whole palms into the mat, the arms, the shoulder blades, the back of the head, even the feet, squeeze the bum a bit. You're not picking up anything, you're just pressing and then uh, relax and see if you can melt a little deeper into that mat. Sometimes creating tension will be, you know, encourage you to then let go of it. Let's give that another try. Just press everything into the mat behind you. Grit the teeth a little bit, curl the toes, and then uh, let go and connect a little deeper to your mat. Good. And then we're going to move to just our core breath. And our core breath is just a breath that connects to our core muscles, including the pelvic floor. So let's put a hand on our low belly, just to monitor that. And when you breathe in, you're just feeling a little bit of, a little bit of expansion, a little bit of filling, like that hand is moving towards the ceiling a little bit. And on your out breath, Think of lifting the pelvic floor as you breathe out and feel the deep belly, feel the belly draw back towards the spine just a little bit. It's very slight, but an important part of what we work on through many of these classes. And just try to get that breathing rhythm nice and even, even inhale, even exhale. Breath in, try to feel the ribs widen and that air go deep into the low back and pelvis as you breathe in and then as you breathe out, feel that activity already in the core. Nice. Good. And then on your next breath, breath in to prepare, out breath, drop with the pelvic floor, in with the belly, same breath. At the same time, let those arms go back overhead and keep the whole spine, the rib cage, nice and connected to the mat and then breathe the arms down by your sides. So exhale, arms overhead and inhale them down by your sides. If you reverse the breath, there's no, uh, you know, there's no real worries in that. All, the only reason I'm cueing the out breath as the arms go overhead are so that you can help yourself to hold those low ribs back. So many of us, if we're tight in the shoulders and we wanna get the arms back, we'll lift the ribs off the mat, right? So you'd like to, when the arms are down at your sides, feel as much of the back of the rib cage on the mat as you can and as the arms go overhead, there's no change there. We're not looking for a shift in the rib cage. We're looking for mobility in the shoulders here. Let's just do two more like that. This is a nice warm up for the arms, the shoulder, the core, our breath. Perfect. And 
hold this one with the arms overhead at a position that's comfortable. If you have shoulder pain, then just back off a little bit. Take a breath in, and on your out breath, you're lifting the pelvic floor, you're drawing in with the belly, you're keeping everything still as you bring the right leg up to tabletop and lower it back down. Switching to do the left side and lower back down. And just try to feel with the arms overhead, this is a little bit of difference through our core. This is a, the, the leg to tabletop is a basic exercise that we do. But having the arms in that overhead position does make you already have to control with the bigger abdominals a little more. So in this alternating movement, right to left, you're seeing, does the pelvis stay still? Do you feel a little rock side to side? Do you feel as you raise one leg that you press down into one arm a little bit? You're just, you're paying attention. It's that awareness of how your body is moving. And maybe you can't change it right away, <laughs> but your intention is there to improve. Beautiful, last one. Lower that leg, lower the arms. And then just a little bit of shoulder blade movement. So breathe in and slide the shoulder blades up towards your ears and exhale. Slide the shoulder blades down, reach the fingertips towards your heels and repeat. Inhale, shoulders rise up, exhale, slide them down. Nothing else moves, this is just shoulder blade movement. Keep the head and neck nice and still. So there's no lifting of the chin as you slide the shoulder blades up. That's our, one of our movement patterns. You're keeping that long, elegant neck. Last one, shoulders up, and then slide the shoulder blades down. Beautiful, good. And then you can take your, um, take your weights in the hands. If you're using them, you certainly don't have to. And we're gonna start with the elbows bent, right? And just, um, just feeling the shoulder blades against the mat, right? The feet are together, the knees are together, nice and close. Take a breath in. And on your out breath, you're gonna let both weights open out to the side, just as far as they can. There might be a different side to side. And then exhale, bring them back up. So it's this nice, Opening across the front of the chest, a little bit of work in our rotator cuff, and then back to where you started. And this is small movement. This is not a big movement with those weights. Opening out to the side and exhaling back in. Opening out to the side, back in. And we'll do two more. And you might be noticing that you're getting a little bit more rotation in the shoulders, a little bit more movement of those weights towards the mat, towards the floor, or maybe not. <laughs> Love, look at that, good. And from here with the, with the weights shoulder blade, uh, shoulder width apart, reach them up towards the ceiling. Good, and we're gonna do uh, an opening across the chest now. So we have, uh, the weights together, a, a nice loose grip, and as you breathe in, I want you to open across the chest, open, 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 and just before the weights would come against the, the floor, oh, I'm going to run out of room there, you're pausing, you're trying to reach the weights further away from each other, and then put the weights on the mat. Exhale to bring everything back in, to overhead. And get wide across your chest. Hold the low ribs back. Be neutral in your spine. Pause just an inch above the floor. Reach a little wider and then lower them down. <sighs> Exhale, back up. Inhale to get wide across the chest. And back up. Inhale to get wide. And back up. And we're gonna do four more. 
just because we could all use a little bit more opening across our chest in general. Try to feel like the shoulder blades are staying broad as you move the weights through space here. Good. And last one, elbows nice and straight, neck nice and relaxed. Pause that inch before you hit the mat and lower it down and then bring it back up. Good, weights can just go down by your sides for a minute. And we're gonna do a little bit of pelvic, pelvic curl and hip movement. So nice breath in. On your out breath, we're drawing the tummy back towards the spine, the spine lowering down towards the mat, and then squeeze the bum, and you're gonna peel up one bone of the back at a time. So lifting the tailbone, the back of the pelvis, the low spine, a little bit of the low ribs. Nice breath in here. And then exhale and peel it back down. And if you can think of two things today, this is what you're going to think of. Even weight on the right and the left foot as you peel up and as you peel down. And the other thing I'd like you to think about is how still are you, is the head and neck staying? Right? Often if we're a little bit stiff in our spine, as we peel down, the head and the neck will lift and bob and there'll be movement there and ideally you'd like to you'd like to be able to stay nice and still you know sort of from the you know the upper chest upward the shoulder blades certainly upward and just check in on on that with yourself you might not be able to keep the head still at this moment but you're that's your goal and you're just bringing awareness to it Good. Let's hold this one up. And we're going to let the right knee open out to the side. Everything else stays nice and still. And the right knee moves out to the side and then pulls back into the center. And we're going to do the right knee only for a total of six. So we've done two. We're going to do four more. And I would like you to keep a nice, relaxed left foot. So try not to grip with the toes. Try to have a nice, you know, heavy contact with that left foot. Good. Last one with the right knee going out to the side. Center it. If you need a break, peel it down and back up again. Otherwise, go right over to the left side. Left knee out to the side. Pull it back into the center. Left knee out to the side. Pull it back into the center. The pelvis is staying still. Both you know, level, it's not tipping side to side, but it's also not shifting to the left and coming back to the right. It's very still in space. And the right knee is also very still. I think this might even be our last one. Perfect. Nice even weight, right to left. Take a breath in, lift those hips a little higher if you can, and peel it down. <laughs> some great work for the back body, but so important. So from there, straighten out the, uh, the left leg and then just bring the right knee in towards the chest for a little, a little length and a stretch in the glute muscles, the back of the hip where you just worked, but also just a lovely, a lovely stretch on its own. You can do a little rock of the knee side to side and just see how that feels in your body. One more breath, and then release that leg. Changing sides. Right leg is straight, left knee. If it's too, uh, if you have an old knee injury or some arthritis and it's hard to grab the shin to pull the thigh in, then grab behind the thigh. You still get a good stretch in the hip without that extra pressure through the knee. So it's whatever, whatever feels good feels better to you. A little rock of that hip or that uh, knee and thigh side to side if it feels right. And just a nice even breath still happening. Good. Perfect. Good. And 
basic level class, we're going to challenge ourselves a little bit today. Um, we're going to put our, um, our hands on the hips and we're going to straighten out the left leg and see if those hips stay level. And with the right leg, we're going to bring that up to tabletop. So even in the movement of bringing the leg up to tabletop, draw in with the belly, feel that pelvic floor lift, feel the low ribs stay back and that leg comes up to tabletop. Sometimes that alone is hard for us, right? Feel that the bony pelvis has stayed still, or if you don't want the hands there, that's fine too. But we're gonna try to circle the leg, circle the thigh, without moving the bony pelvis. So we're gonna try to bring that thigh across the body a little bit. It won't be a huge circle generally. Bring it down a little bit, out to the side a little bit, and back to where we started. And we're gonna try to do three in each direction. So a circle. And it's nice and slow and controlled. And I'd like you to use your out breath where you really need it. So often we're good through the bringing the knee across and down, but when we go out to the side, oh, you know, the pelvis follows the leg. Really try to use the out breath there and keep that bony pelvis firmly rooted to the mat. Reverse your circle, let's do three the other way. Or more if you're faster, as long as you're still. And just feel the rest of the body staying nice and still. The left leg on the mat is fairly relaxed. You don't have to be pressing through that with a nice death grip. <laughs> Good, make that one your last one and hug the knee just briefly in towards the chest. Release that right leg. Hands on the pelvis just to monitor for movement before you bring the left leg up to tabletop. Think of drawing in with the belly. Think of that pelvic floor lift. And then when you're ready, start your circles, thinking about it's a thigh that moves. The thigh moves across the body, down, out to the side, back to the center. Or if you like, you can think of the kneecap tracing a circle on the ceiling. That often helps. And last one in this direction. And just notice if there's a different side to side. We often have one hip that is, you know, able to move freely from the pelvis. And another one that tends to drag the pelvis along for the ride. <laughs> Other direction now, if you haven't already switched. And that's why we do these classes, to even out our asymmetries. Good. And last circle in this direction. Pause in tabletop. Bring the knee in towards the chest just briefly. And release it down. Good. Let's bend the knees again. And have the feet grounded to the mat. Back to taking our hand weights. And we're going to do a little scissoring with the hands. And you have the option of leaving the legs alone or adding in a little bit of leg movement, right? So we're gonna take the arms up to shoulder width apart, overhead. Make sure the shoulder blades are still on the mat and not reaching you know, too much towards the ceiling. You're broad in your chest. And the scissor is just uh, the right arm going overhead, the left arm lowering down, trying to keep the shoulder, the right shoulder away from the ear and switching. So if the arms alone are a little bit hard, then just work on this. We're trying to keep the rib cage nice and still. You don't want to feel the spine, you know, arching more or rolling off to one side. And if you want to add the leg, then we're going to bring the right leg up to tabletop and do a little repeater with that right leg. So the right leg is going to lower as if the toe is going to tap the mat and pick back up. As we scissor and we'll do um, we're going to do six on the right and six on the left. So um, here we go. So a nice scissor, right toe tap, and switch. Right toe tap, scissor, right toe tap, scissor, scissor, good. Is the head and neck relaxed on the mat? This is your last one with the right. Tap, 
Good. Lower the right leg. Bring the arms back to shoulder width apart. Left leg up to tabletop. Scissor. And tap. Scissor. And tap. Scissor. I like this because it makes you pause at the end of your scissor. Right? And it lets you know, you know, gives you a chance, I should say to feel for any asymmetries. If you've rotated through the rib cage, gives you a chance to notice if the ear has climbed up to, uh, or the shoulders climbed up to touch the ear. Do we have one more here? I think we might have done six. Let's do one more just in case. Tap, beautiful. Lower that left leg, bring the arms back to uh, be shoulder width apart. And here you can either take both weights you know, put them together and hold them with each hand, or you could just use a single weight, depending on how, uh, how much tricep work you want to get. We're going to hold. We're going to go into a little bit of imprint with the low back. We're going to hold those low ribs back. We're going to let the arms go overhead so that they're on a bit of like almost a 45 degree angle. You're wide in your collarbones. You're already working here. You feel a little work in the abdominals. Feel a little work in the shoulders just as you hold this position, right? And we're going to lower a little bit more and pick it back up. Lower and pick it back up. And you should feel that, eh? Just in the arms as you return towards the ceiling. You don't have to go all the way because you'll sort of lose any sort of resistance but you're coming up until you feel that get easy and then lowering with control. Don't let the ribs pop. You're holding that spine in a gentle imprint. Yeah, that's work, eh? And it should be comfortable in the shoulders. If you have pain, you're going too far or the weights are too heavy or you need a treatment. <laughs> Good, this time you're gonna hold where you organized yourself at the beginning at that sort of 45 degree angle and you're going to bend the elbows lowering the weight so they're they're almost just above your head right on on the mat and then straighten back out and we're going to do eight like this so that was one and two and three and if you're feeling good here check in on the elbows are they really wide or are they able to be shoulder width apart so that you're really working the back of the arm the tricep area. Good. Who's counting? Aha. Let's do three more. We're probably doing more than eight. <laughs> Two. Beautiful. And one. Lovely. Bring those arms back up. Don't drop the weights on yourself as you release into each hand and then lower them down. Good. You can put the weights off to the side. Perfect. And we're going to come onto your side. That bottom arm can be your pillow. You can cradle the head if you want, or you can grab a little cushion if that's, if that's what you need. And we're going to bend the knees to be in our little clamshell position. And we're going to do a little bit of broken clam. It's good for our hips. So think of the little space between waist and mat. Top hand can be on the top hip to monitor for movement or Hand can be on the mat. Nice breath in to prepare. And we're going to open the top leg and close it back up. Just a regular clam, just to warm up. Good. And then we'll add the broken clam part. If you can keep the pelvis nice and still, open the knee and then lift the leg just a couple inches. That's your, your broken clam part. Lower it down and close. So you have open, lift, lower, close. Open, lift, lower, close. Open, lift, lower, close. Open, lift, lower, close. And you should feel that in that outer hip, eh? It's good work. Let's do three more. Really trying to stay still in the pelvis. Strong in the abdominals. Last one like this. Close it up. Good. And then I want you to take your top arm onto the mat and I want you to roll ahead just a little bit with the chest, even with the hips. 
just a little bit because we're really going to try to target the back of the hip here. We're going to leave the bottom knee where, we are, where it was and we're going to straighten the top leg out to be in line with the rest of the spine or even a little bit behind us, right? Not by swaying the back, but just by opening in the front of the hip. So you've got a nice long lever, you've rolled forward in the pelvis a little bit, and you're gonna lower the toes or lower the foot just a little bit and pick it up. Lower and pick it up. And here you're just really trying to feel that, not at all in the front of the leg, but really in more in the, in the bum, in the glutes, in the back of the hip. These are good pelvic stabilizing muscles. They're in relation to the pelvic floor. Great for balance. Right? It's a long lever, so if you get tired and need a break, go for it. Otherwise, we're going to try to do four more. Four. Three. Two. Yes. And one. Hold it here. Str length, you know, stretch the toes out a little more, lengthen in that leg. We're going to try three circles. Keeping the waist nice and still. And reverse. Awesome. And lower it down. Well done. We have to do the other side. So organizing yourself in your clamshell position to start with. Bottom arm is your pillow or getting that cushion if you need it. The knees should be the same length. If you're stacked in the pelvis, you look down at the knees, they should both be one right over the other. Have a little space between waist and mat. Like think of picking up that lowest rib. You're already strong in the abdominals before you start. And then just three clams, regular clamshells to warm it up. Good. And then we'll go into our broken clam. So we have open, lift, lower, close. Open, lift, lower, close. How does that feel one side to the other, eh? Maybe it feels great. Open, lift, lower, close. If we're not out, you know, walking hills and being on uneven surfaces, we, we often get a little bit uh, lazy in these outer hip muscles, right? And the glutes. So this is a really nice way to sort of wake everything up, help us with our balance, help us with the comfort of our low back, pelvis, and hip area. Has that been enough? <laughs> Let's do one more. Open, lift, lower, close. Great. Top hand comes onto the mat if it's not already there, and I want you to roll forward just a little bit. So you're looking down at your mat a bit. The top hip has come ahead of the bottom one. Bottom knee stays bent, and that top leg is going to reach back to be in line with the rest of the spine if someone were looking at you from above, or even a little bit behind you if your hip flexibility allows that. And then we're going to lower the toes. They don't have to hit the mat unless you're very flexible in the hips, and then raise it back up. So lower and lift, lower and lift. You're still trying to stay steady in the waist, but you're helped by having rolled, a, rolled ahead, and certainly you should be feeling it behind the, the hip and not in the front of the thigh or the front of the hip. How many more are we going to do? Four. How about that? Seems to be the number of the day. Good. And on our last one after this, last one here, hold this one up. Stretch that leg out just a little bit longer. Try to stay still in the waist and go for three circles. Three, two, one, and reverse. Three, two, one, and lower it down. Gorgeous. Coming onto your front, come onto hands and knees. And we'll just do a, a beautiful cat stretch. So fingers are spread, chest is wide, nice neutral spine. 
and not being picky about it today, just rounding up into that beautiful arched position. Breathing in and then releasing down to neutral. And one more time, round it up. Lovely. <sighs> Release. And then it might feel really nice after that hip work to rock the hips back into a shell stretch, child's pose position. You can leave the arms overhead for a little stretch if you wish, or immediately wrap the hands around and down by your feet, letting those shoulder blades get wide and the arms sort of flop forward. And as you breathe in, trying to round the spine a little bit, so trying to get a little tunnel between belly and thighs, just for that low back to open up. Gorgeous. And then if you have any low bone density, help yourself forward with your hands first. So come into a nice straight spine and use the hands to come up to kneeling. If you don't have any worries of osteoporosis or osteopenia, you can just roll up or restack nice and, nice and smoothly. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. A little mat class and a little bit of emphasis on the arms. And, and then you can go enjoy your day. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.